Okay, let's get started. Um, we do have only an hour, or so I think the material here might um, be more than an hour, so I'll just sort of see how it goes. I usually spend an hour and a half on this uh, material, so we're going to um, try and move a little uh, quickly. Um, and a, a part of it is hands-on, so you all have computers. Uh, you don't have to follow on if you don't want to, but it is hands-on, so we'll see how all of that works with, with time. Um, so what are we going to try and talk about today? So this is really based on the previous two classes I've done here and a lot of feedback I've gotten. So um, please do give feedback. Um, it helps people that come back to classes. This Much of what I'm doing here today is the way it is because of other people like you that have given the library and me feedback on this material. So, so I'm hoping that this, this material is getting better thanks to other attendees like you. Um, so we'll discuss today what are the typical needs people have when they want to create a web presence for themselves. Um, and we'll talk about that in the context of WordPress. And we'll try to understand the distinction between these three things, WordPress, WordPress.com, and WordPress.org. Um, and people have asked in the past, you know, what are these three things? How do I differentiate? What do I understand about them? So we'll try to approach some of that. Um, we'll talk about some web services in general. So instead of just focusing on WordPress and, and website building, the idea here is to give you a sense of what does it mean when you're out there shopping for services in order to build yourself a web presence. And most people have encountered this already. You have seen yourself needing to buy domain names and hosting and storage and this. How do all of these things play together? And what are you really getting when you when you buy these. Sometimes they're free. Why are they free? What's the catch, right? So we'll try and talk about that today. Um, and then we'll dig into the basic structure of WordPress websites and specifically how that works out on WordPress.com. Um, and so that's the difference we will try and focus on. And the reason we'll use WordPress.com, among other reasons, is that it helps us do something hands-on. We can do it for free today. Um, it is it, you know, fairly easy to use. So that's why I picked WordPress.com um, as, as, as the sandbox that we will play in today. And then we'll try to end with some discussion around the limitations of WordPress, the software, as well as WordPress.com, just to give you a sense of what happens next. What, what, what more do you have to learn? What more do you have to know in terms of using, um, creating websites for yourself? Um, I run a small consulting firm. Most of my work is with uh, nonprofits. Um, I do a series of training uh, opportunities like this, mostly with community organizations like the library that are focused on job training and technology training. Um, so you can go to my website. And as I said, if you have any questions, just because today is so limited and I'm moving so fast, if you have any questions, which you will, um, feel free to email me. Uh, info at dstrategies.org. If you do enter your email in the survey form, I will send you a copy of this slide deck. Um, so that's, that's the way in which you can opt in to receiving this slide deck from, from me. Yeah, yeah. And also, if you just say, hey, I was at your class, can you send me? So I just need some sort of consent, essentially, that um, you are giving me an email so that I can respond with this slide deck. Um, OK. So before we start, as I said, uh, we will have the hands-on portion. So if you have a browser, preferably Firefox or Chrome. Um, so for those of you that are using your own computer, if you have those, we have found problems with Internet Explorer in the past, Safari, that it doesn't work. Um, all of the functionality doesn't seem to work. or We don't know why. There could be an older version of the Windows or at Macintosh or, or the browser. But we know pretty much that Firefox and Chrome always works. Okay, So just, just letting you know. Um, it's optional if you can access email. Um, you, in order to do certain things with WordPress.com, you eventually have to access your email. So you have to give them an email and be able to access it. Um, but it's not required, at least for now. Um, and again, I don't know if we'll get to this. We'll look at. Um, sharing from your blog to your social media account. So if you have one, you can do that. Um, uh, so, And um, I'll see if I can do that uh, just in terms of time. But also, um, 
my password to my Twitter account is on my phone, and my phone died this morning. Oh. So <laughs> by the time we get there, I'm, I think I remember it. But if I don't remember it, I can't show you that part. Um, OK. So um, let's talk about some of the reasons that people want to be on the web. And if you don't see yourself on this list, I'm very curious what your reasons are. Um, many of these are actually people that came here. My, the first time I taught this class, I didn't have this list. And I was like, why are you here? What are you learning WordPress for? And honestly, the first class I taught about six months ago, there were about 30 people in here, 10 people outside. I was surprised. WordPress has been around for like 15, 20 years. I was amazed that people still use the software or are interested in learning about it. And I think that's great. Um, and so it's obvious that we all more and more need to use the web for our businesses, for our jobs, um, for showing off the technology skills we have, or for showing off the other types of work we've done. And more and more people are expecting to find you on the internet. If you're selling something, if you're selling candy at a candy store, they want to get your candy from the internet. Um, if you do photography, if you do um, work with fabrics, they want to see you know, pictures of the work you've done on the internet. So um, I had a high school teacher whose, job, whose desire was to take videos of himself and post it on the internet so that his students could learn even after they'd gone back home. Um, so there's a lot of reasons that people realize that being on the internet um, is, a, is essential, um, especially when the people you're dealing with, your customers or your readers or your students, are much younger. Uh, they just expect everything to happen on the internet. And if you're not in the internet, you're pretty much invisible to them. Uh, and so there is um, more and more a need um, for, for being able to um, have these digital skills. Um, I also think it's very important for us to acquire these skills in order to help people that don't have them. Um, there are lots of small organizations, nonprofits, small businesses that simply don't have the time for it. Um, and the more of us that can acquire these skills in order to help everyone else, um, I think it's, it's really great. Um, anything, anything on here that um, doesn't relate to your reasons? I'm always curious if there's something new, something different. Yes? Um, I'm here to learn very specific questions I have about coding, coding. Okay. the codex. Yeah, OK. Um, and so, so let me, since you brought it up, um, the, the, I have actually a two-part series of this talk. And this itself is an attempt to condense part one into like two-thirds of the space. And mo usually, I, I talk about the coding part in the second part. Um, I'll try to answer some questions. We can, I'll see if I can get afterwards. afterwards 10 minutes. I might actually stay, because there's, there's a mixer later today um, in the library as part of the Digital Inclusion Week where the library has gotten a lot of tech volunteers to come and just hang out. Uh, I believe there will be snacks and maybe drinks. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But um, if you run a small business, if you run a nonprofit especially, um, then you know, stick around till 5, I think, and then you'll meet a lot of folks that are in the tech industry that have been basically cajoled and invited into coming and hanging out tonight. So I just want to put that out there. So I might stay. I'm not 100% sure, though. Um, um, so, OK, so once you know you need to be on the internet, how do you get there, right? Um, and this is not even a full list of all the possible ways in which you can create a presence for yourself. Um, but typically, you're faced with one of these options, right? Either you buy a website service from a company that offers a lot of different things, and then they say, hey, you can buy a WordPress website from us. Just click here, pay us $20 a month, and you get a WordPress website. Okay, so it's a pretty um, sort of easy to do process. You, you, you get a lot more, but the WordPress website piece of it is one of the services that they offer. Um, and I've named some of the companies that tend to offer this. So if you've had experience with one of these companies, if you ever bought services from them, um, th these are usually referred to as hosting providers, internet hosting providers, internet service providers. Um, and they offer many services, but one of them tends to be easy to create websites and typically easy to create WordPress websites. In the last four or five years, there's been a second type of service that only do websites. They don't offer anything else. 
you create an account, and from the get-go, their whole goal is to give you a website. And it's usually very easy to use, much easier to use, drag and drop interface. You don't need to know a lick of coding. You don't need to understand any technical jargon. You just create the account, drag and drop, move boxes around, and you have a website. Um, Squarespace, Wix, and Weebly are probably the most well-known of these companies. They're all based out of here in San Francisco. Um, and they all have slight differences, but pretty much the same thing. You get a website. And you can literally sort of click things as you buy things. And it's at the end of it, you can choose sort of one out of many different options of how your website looks. Um, I'm old enough to know that forever people have been trying to offer you know, website making services. All the big companies, you might not even know that Google offers a way to create your own websites. It's called the Google Sites Service. Um, Microsoft has a couple of options, and some of the benefits of these options are that they integrate well with existing services. So if you already use Microsoft in your office, you're using off, uh, the software office for document collaboration, it will integrate with their service that allows you to create a website, and people can look at the material you're publishing. You publish it via Microsoft Office and goes online um, to, to the web. Um, and then the other option is you actually learn a little bit more of coding yourself. You start to get a little more comfortable with the te technology of actual software that is used to create websites. And then the degree to which you have to become a coder to use these different pieces of software can vary a lot. Um, and you can start at a fairly superficial level, like we're going to do today. And then there's, like, there's just a huge iceberg of knowledge sitting beneath that. Um, and of course. Some people, if you can afford it, you go hire a coder, right? So that's your sort of kind of a, the, usually the most expensive option. Um, can also be just the most time consuming because you have to deal with someone who's doing it for you and it can, can be pretty like, annoying sometimes to do that. But this is, tends to be the range of things you kind of think about. Um, even as I was saying this, I was thinking, I forgot one, which is Facebook is your website. A lot of people now will tell me, Oh yeah, my website is my Facebook page. That's it. They don't. That's that's the only way you can communicate with them is you go to their Facebook page. Um, so that's actually yet another option. Um, any questions? Any other thoughts about other ways in which you could be doing? Yeah. Do uh, Google and Microsoft charge for creating a website? I will use that as a segue to my next <laughs> slide. <laughs> Um, so of course, the you know. So how do you compare, right? We listed about twenty companies just on that one slide, and that, that is not even that is not even a, like a quarter of the possible options out there. Um, so price is obviously a big part of um, a lot of these, and and it's hard to go into a, a chart to discuss the comparisons. But the two things you can you need to think about are: is there an upfront cost, and is there an ongoing cost? Uh, most online services usually don't have an upfront cost. And that's just the culture now, right? So most services don't want to say, to get in the door, you don't have to pay anything. To kind of answer your question, with Microsoft, mm -hmm. um, with Google, because they're an online company, services company, they tend to be free to start off, but then there's charges later for like premium services. You know, Microsoft has always had a licensing model, so you kind of have to buy the Microsoft software right up front, and yeah. then other things might be charged more money later, um, or they'll give you some free stuff. Um, so if you're using uh, SharePoint, you'll find that it's easiest to do SharePoint online if you have a copy of SharePoint, which would be about $50 or $100. But then you pay for mm -hmm. online disk space later on. Um, so, th so Microsoft is, and Adobe is the same way. You kind of have to buy the Adobe software first, and then it kind of hooks you into a website, which initially the website is kind of free, but then there's more add-on costs for that. Um, well, so, so all those depend on downloading the software. It's not in the cloud. Um, with, with Microsoft and Adobe specifically, you do have to do a download. Oh, so there is a download piece. So that, that, that is, I think, a model that's disappearing pretty fast. I'm pretty sure you know, soon enough they will just give you a, an initial free, you know, it's called freemium, right? You, you get this initial stuff for free, and then you pay for more. Because WordPress is not a downloadable program. We'll come to that in a, in a minute, yeah. Um, so, um, so then the other thing you want to think about is ease of use, right? As, as I discussed, services like 
Weebly or Wix, um, make it really easy to create a website. So if you're looking to get something done fast, you don't have a lot of time to think about it, figure it out, um, then you, you kind of want to look at some of those services um, and then compare the pricing options of the different services. Um, if you use a hosting provider, they might be a little bit cheaper on the space that they offer, a little bit harder to use on creating a website, but it might balance out for you. Um, and then another thing to think about is, are you creating a website just for yourself and you're the only person that's going to use it? Or are other people going to work with you on it? Um, and that's also an option that you have to sort of think about. Some, some sites don't make it easy for you to share information. Like, what if I want my business partner to come in and edit the website, but she can only have certain level of permission. I need more like levels of permission. Mm -hmm. So some services do offer that, some don't. Um, another big thing is uh, disk space. It tends to be, uh, in some ways, the most expensive aspect um, for most users. Like, the first thing that you find yourself, oh, oh, I have to spend money for that, is disk space. You have photos, you have videos, you're uploading content, and you're thinking, oh, man, I'm not getting a lot for, um, for the cheapest level. Um, so that usually tends to be what, the co in, in terms of cost, that's the first thing most of you will probably encounter. Um, and then you want to think about what else you want to do with the website, right? So websites, for most of us, no longer is a matter of simply having a picture and a name, and that's it. You put it up there, maybe your resume, and you're done, right? You want to do, you want to sell stuff. You want to change your in inventory. You want to integrate with your Twitter account. You want people to fill in forms. You want them to give you money on using a credit card. There's all of these other things you have to think about. Um, so you have to also kind of compare the options and figure it out. Um, and the last two, I would say, for most of us, probably not a question. Um, you know, how well will the service scale? Meaning, as more and more people come and see my website, um, can this service handle it? Um, but most services, free services, will handle thousands of visitors a day with no problem. Okay, so if unless you're getting past thousands of people seeing your site every day, you, you're probably fine. Security, again, most services, especially the ones that you don't do any technical stuff yourself, tend to be fairly secure. The more you manage it yourself and configure it yourself, the more you can shoot yourself in the foot. So you, again, you have to think a little bit about that. Um, and we'll try to notice some of that today, um, some of the choices that WordPress makes that tries to help stop you from shooting yourself in the foot, basically, with, when it comes to security. OK, so why do we pick WordPress for today? Um, not only is it used in an incredible number of websites all around the world, so it's highly reliable. It's been worked on by thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of people. Um, it is built on open source technologies, which means that there is much more of a chance that it can't go out of business, so to speak. Um, you know, If Microsoft shuts down tomorrow, all of their services will shut down. Right? They're not, they're not going to survive past the age of the company. Um, whereas WordPress survives almost mainly because of people who don't work at the company WordPress.com. Um, so there's a huge uh, developer community, which also makes it actually a great tool for those of you that are here for that reason, to understand what it feels like to actually work in the IT sector. So a lot of what uh, we, I do in the larger presentation is talk about if you're trying to get a job, how does this help you kind of put yourself in the mindset of someone in the IT sector? Um, but that has actually surprisingly not been the reason most people come to these classes at the library. So, um, um, but I'm happy to maybe answer some questions later um, around that. Um, and so let's try to quickly compare WordPress um, on those um, you know, comparison points that I put, put out in the last uh, two slides ago. So, so I'll take this slide as an opportunity to say, what is WordPress and what is WordPress.com? Okay. So quick history lesson. WordPress, the software, is open source. You can download it. You can get your own copy of it. It's free. It is always free. You can change it, and you can publish your own version of it. And under certain limitations, you can call it your version of WordPress. I can make a version of WordPress and call it Samir Press. And that's OK, under certain restrictions. Okay? There's some, some legal limitations there. So um, 
It was created by a group of people that then went on to create a company. That company is called Automatic Software, and their main product is on the website WordPress.com, which is websites hosted on WordPress. That's their main product. <coughs> Uh, when they realized that the software was super popular and tens of thousands of people that did not work for them were donating work for free, they created a nonprofit called WordPress.org, whose job it is to handle this community, uh, to continue to develop WordPress, and to put it out there for free. So they're actually, as a company, providing support for the community by virtue of providing support for WordPress.org. So most especially as you get into WordPress and do your own WordPress configuration, most of your time you'll spend with WordPress.org because you're getting code written by other people like you all around the world, which is hosted on WordPress.org. Um, but if you're just buying yourself a website, which is what we'll kind of do today, we, we won't buy though, but you know, if you're just creating a website, um, you're interacting with WordPress.com, the company. Um, but at the heart of it, they have all their, your websites using WordPress, the software, which is free. Um, setting it up, zero dollars. We'll see that today. Um, and their basic tier is three bucks a month, which I think is pretty darn good. Um, ease of use, WordPress.com is generally, WordPress is fairly easy to use. WordPress.com is actually super easy. WordPress, the software, is fairly easy. There is a little bit of a learning curve, and we'll sort of see the pieces of it that you have to kind of get your mind used to. Um, so I wouldn't say that they're easier than some of the prefab services. So if you're really looking for, I don't want a headache, WordPress might not be the answer for you, right? So I'll put that out there up front. Um, collaboration, they have, from the get-go, they were built for collaboration. Um, it is all around the idea that many, many people will be editing the content on the website. So that's been a big part of um, WordPress. Um, storage, so those are the numbers. You can do the math. Um, for $25 a month, a little bit less than $25 a month, they'll give you f unlimited disk space, um, which is not bad uh, in the industry as a whole, unlimited disk space for 25 bucks a month. Um, and then I think the next level up is like, what, nine bucks a month, and you get 13 gigabytes. Um, you know, so, so that is, I would say, um, a reasonable amount. But of course, if you're, if you're a portfolio person with a digital portfolio, lots of photos, you might find this, whoa, this is a little expensive. I got to think about it. Um, integrations, that's really the power of WordPress. You can do anything you want, OK? You can integrate it and make it do pretty much everything, everything you can think of. Someone's tried to write a piece of WordPress to do that. OK, so that is really where uh, it comes into its own. Um, and again, with scalability and security, again, having been built by thousands of very seasoned developers for a long time, um, it is fairly well known. I mean, we, we know that almost 30% of websites around the world are using it, so it is a fairly secure surprisingly secure, I should say, um, to me, um, piece of software. Um, fewer, fewer critical bugs, I think, have been reported on WordPress than on Windows, right? Um, so yeah, so, uh, but um, it is surprisingly secure. OK, um, yeah, I was afraid I might not have enough time. So I might um, do the next three slides. I'll actually skip one or two of the next three slides. but. As I said, there are many things you're buying when you're buying um, yourself a website. Uh, typically, the picture of what a website looks like is there's someone out there reading your web. They don't know where it is. All they know is they go to their computer, type in your domain name or your URL, right? You say, oh, the URL for my website is this. Um, and typically, you have to do two things. You have to buy yourself that domain name. And the person who sells you that domain name is usually called a domain registrar. And then you have to buy yourself hosting which is kind of the actual space, um, or also the actual machines. And what you do is you buy the domain name, which means it's yours, uh, for about 10 bucks a month. Um, and then the hosting is usually you're sort of renting a piece, right? So like, people out there have machines with lots and lots of disk space, and you get a small piece of it. You pay per month a certain fee. You can think of it as renting a room in a large mansion. Um, 
WordPress.com, the company, is a domain registrar. So this could be both, you can buy a domains from them and you buy hosting from them. Many companies are domain registrars, but they don't provide hosting. Many companies provide hosting, but they're not domain registrars, okay? Um, using WordPress.com means that you don't have to worry about um, who's my domain registrar and where's my website and how do I connect them. But if you, if you, if, you know, if sometimes you might face, be faced with that problem where people have said, I already have a domain, what do I do now? Well, you have to know how your domain registrar lets you set it up so that your domain knows where you rented that disk space and the machines. And that, that's a technical setup you have to, most domain registrars will have a, a description of how to do that. So I'm gonna skip that in terms of some discussion of what is a domain. I'm gonna skip this so we can keep moving. Uh, but did the explanation of domains, domain registrar, sort of you're buying this from two different people, did that help? Are there any questions around that? Um, how many people here have already bought a, purchased a domain for themselves? Okay. Um, so I guess in previous classes, the percentage has been much higher. So this has been a, a section that people stop me and say, oh, we've got to talk about this. Um, OK, cool. So we're halfway through. I think, I think this is roughly good. Not great, but good. Um, so let's actually do a little bit of hands-on stuff. I'm going to switch browser windows. Um, try to follow along as, as much as you can. Um, and if you know, it's, you're not able to uh, follow along 100%, that's totally fine. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to go to WordPress.com. I'm going to use Firefox, yes. Was, what was the question? That, okay, yeah, so, Firefox. Wait, I'm sorry, but didn't you mention before that um, Firefox didn't work well with them? No, no, no. no, I said an Explorer Explorer's might not work very well. But Firefox and Chrome should, should be fine. Um, another thing is that um, WordPress, I've, we, I realized through, the, through these classes that they change their website fairly regularly. Sometimes, like, not everyone here in the same room will see the same website. Okay, so if, the, if it's really hard to figure it out, just stop us, but um, you might have to kind of look around and sort of try and play on the website, but yeah, you will sometimes not see the same site as, I, as I'm seeing here. Um, okay, um, yeah, there you go. They are now also claiming this number, 27% oh. of the internet. Um, so get started, um, and there are basically six steps here, most of them, um, in case you think you're going to um, use this WordPress.com later, most of these you can change later. So for the purpose of today, go through it as quickly as you can, no problem. You can always come back and fix it, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna try and click um, sort of the most immediate uh, options available to me. So I'm, I just clicked a type of website, I'm on step two. Um, they have a list of possible options. What they're trying to do is to say, what kind of website would you like, just so that they can set you up with a default layout that approximates that need. Okay, again, you can change the layout, you can buy new layouts later, so it's not really that important, but you might want to quickly look at the types of descriptions. You're like, oh, does one of these fit me? Um, portfolio business, etc. So again, I'm just gonna pick what's the, the top left corner, kind of like a default. Should we do this one? Uh, yeah, and, and you know, you can make different choices if something grabs your eye. It's not gonna change most of what I'm gonna say. It will change some, obviously your end product will look a little different, but it won't change much. So feel free to make slightly different choices. Um, do as, you choose start with the website, right? You click on the start with the website. Uh, oh, yeah. so, to, so to get Which here, no, I said start with the blog. Start oh, a blog, blog. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, then they say choose a theme, and we'll try to spend some time. This is, this is really the first word in this whole process that is WordPress specific theme. Okay, and we'll try to look at a few more words like this. Like, this is now like the first time you realize, oh, I guess there's WordPress software here because they're using the word theme. Um, and as they say, no need to overthink it. You can always switch um, and you can always change it. A theme is basically 
at this point, let's just say what your website looks like. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we'll 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 try to pick apart that definition in a minute. So I'm going to again pick just one theme, whatever theme. Okay. Here they're saying, do you have a, own a domain? Since most of you don't own a domain, um, type in just any word without spaces. In fact, if you do try to type in uh, spaces, uh, notice that after a little gap, it might be a bit slow because we're all using the internet here, um, yeah. it will actually remove all the spaces. So you, you, you know, and if you try to type in other characters that it does not want you to type in, it will automatically remove that. So, so you can type in whatever you want, but it will give you what is called a subdomain. And subdomains cannot contain anything other than, um, well, they can contain hyphens. But in this case, it, it decides that it's not going to let you type in a hyphen. right? Um, and so it is giving you a subdomain on the WordPress.com domain. And so in some ways, the subdomain, you can think of it as your identity on their domain. So it's like their big house. You got a little room. And what's the name of your room? Well, in this case, it's Samir is here. Um, I'm going to say something else, which I am pretty sure will not be used. So I'll say SFPL May 20th. Um, Obviously, if I use something more common, there's already a website out there called that. Um, but if I use something so uncommon, um, oops, it's oops. the 11th, not the 20th. Um, it will pop up. I think I saw a question. Yes. Yeah. Um, so if you create like the .wordpress.com one, and then later you want to buy the domain, like it says, you could do it <coughs> just .com and it's included a premium. Can you you can like switch that later? Yeah, so the question is, can I switch later? And yes, you can. You can switch pretty much everything later. I can't think of anything you cannot switch. Perhaps your email address, which you'll type in in the next screen, might be un not changeable. But um, I think pretty much everything else you can switch. Um, notice that it says upgrade, so now you get the first taste of what money buys you. Um, right? So you get, you, get a, you get to rent a room for free. But if you have your own domain name from your domain registrar, you already paid that domain registrar. Uh, you might, you'll now have to pay them to make the connection. Of course, they'll, they'll try to sweeten the deal. They'll say, wait, if you buy it from us, we'll actually make it cheaper. Right? So there's all these like, little games that they're playing. They, they want to basically try and own your custom as much as possible. Right? So uh, you'll find, if you once you click through and try to upgrade, that if you let them be your domain registrar, it's, ch it's cheaper. Uh, if someone else is your domain registrar, you want to make the connection. Oh, wait, that's a little more expensive. Um, Question: For yeah. uh, when you enter your email address, can you create multiple free uh, free WordPress.com? Uh, I believe so. I believe so. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think you can have as many subdomains as you want with your email address. So the question was: With one account, can I have many uh, websites? And I, I believe the answer is yes. <laughs> 